in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. The labor of all church workers shall never be in vain as our Father, the Father of all globally, the convener of GCK, Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumui gives us the Global Church Workers Conference live from Taraba State, Nigeria. All church workers and ministers globally to join hands with all ministers across Taraba State, Northern Nigeria from 17 to 20 November 2022. It's our time for triumphing in ministry, even in troublous times. Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumui will be ministering 8 a.m. daily from Jalingo, Taraba State, to the world, via satellites and on all our social media platforms. It will be an avalanche of global expositions and revelations. Your labor will not be in vain. When we started the year 2022, you had hopes, you had desires, you had dreams, but suddenly, all over the globe, we read and hear of failures economically, politically, with climate change and security breaches here and there. And now, I hear a voice echoing towards the northeastern geopolitical zone of Nigeria. Now, I hear a voice echoing towards the northeastern geopolitical zone of Nigeria. Today, the Lord is saying, weep not. All your tears are dried because behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the roots of David has prevailed. And it's confirmed that there's still one hope, one way, one solution and one power that never fails. The power of Jesus Christ reverberates this November with GCK live from Adamawa State, Nigeria. The land of beauty set to beautify your life through Christ. As the covenant of GCK, Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumui will touch down in Adamawa, Nigeria with a power that never fails. Healing. Deliverance, salvation. November 24 to 29, 2022. 1600 hours GMT daily and 0700 hours GMT for Sunday worship service. Young people from all levels will be empowered for excellence at the Impact Academy on November 26, 2022 at 0600 hours GMT. Ministers and professionals will be empowered for breakthrough in ministry on November 25, 26, 28 and 29 at 0600 hours GMT. GMT. Our guest gospel minister is Bob Feets. This is an avalanche of manifestation of the power that never fails for all lives. Power will herald your celebration. Dr. William Kumui says, Be it confirmed in your life in Jesus' name. GCK, the gospel to every creature. In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our coming together. Thank you for Johnny Moses, you granted your children as they came to this exploit 94. We bless your name, Lord, because of the provision you have made for each individual and for the corporate body. We know that you have a purpose in mind for bringing every one of us here. We are praying, O oh Lord, that your blessings will be abundant upon every life in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that you begin with us tonight and that you give us hearts that seek after you so that your purpose for bringing us here you will fulfill in Jesus name and we're praying O oh Lord that you'll do great and mighty things in every one of our lives and prepare us for great exploits in our lives on our campuses and everywhere we go in Jesus name keep us awake tonight as we listen to your word bless your people O oh Lord thank you because we know you have answered 
In Jesus' name we pray. I welcome every one of you to this important meeting, Exploits 94. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. I want to tell you that it could be a very important landmark in your life. Or it could be an ordinary meeting also in your life. What happens will depend on your attitude. Whatever happens to you during this week will depend on what you are expecting. And how you prepare to receive from the Lord. Although we are students, the majority of us, and the majority of us are young people, I want you to realize that if you have the right attitude to the Lord, from the beginning of the program tonight, great things can begin to happen in your life in Jesus' name. Whatever you get and whatever you do not get will, will be determined by you, by your attitude, by your reaction, by your response to everything that goes on in the meeting here. You see, in a meeting like this, there may be people that just come to see what is going on. They really do not want to get anything from the Lord. Or if they were wishing to get something from the Lord, they are not so determined that by the grace of God, the meeting will make a very indelible mark in their lives. And because of that, they might just come and go back as they came. Other people might settle some little, little things for the Lord. And the Lord might touch their lives in some little ways because they are only permitting the Lord to touch some areas of their lives. Other people might come to a meeting like this and come with the attitude of coming to their meeting. They do not have the attitude that this is our meeting. I'm here as a participant. I'm here because I know that this meeting belongs to me and I belong to the people that are here. They will approach the meeting as, well, it's their meeting. Those uh, deeper life campus fellowship people are having some meeting and they call me to come along and I want to see what they are doing. And therefore they do not really are going to, they are not going to pay attention to anything that has been said. They still go their way. They still do whatever they want to do. They pray their uh, maybe Orthodox, Anglican, Methodist, or Presbyterian way. And they say, this is just me. And I'm going to remain myself. And you'll be surprised that people remain themselves and they never get anything new. But there are some people here tonight, I believe, you are very hungry for the Lord. You are saying, Lord, I am here. And this meeting will have to change my life. I really need to do something for the Lord. And it is in this meeting I believe those things are going to take place. And I'm praising God for such people. Great things are going to happen in your life in Jesus name. As we're here together, if we really mean business with the Lord, I do not believe there's any mountain that can stand before us. If we really mean business for the Lord, we can put the devil on the run. And I mean we can really put the devil on the run. Some of you might have uh, met me uh, in the various states as we have had uh, programs in the various states. And you might have had some things that have happened and seen some of the things that have happened. But I'm believing for a double portion in this meeting. And it's going to depend upon your attitude. If you are here to criticize, you are going to find a lot of things to criticize. In fact, I'm going to so do some things that even from tonight, I might even give you some things to criticize. I'm going to so preach a message as if I'm preaching to giants. As if I'm preaching to people who really want to take on a Goliath. And if you are there like a grasshopper behind, uh, you know, the auditorium, you'll be criticizing what I'm saying tonight. Why are they preaching like that? I'm preaching like that so you can get something to criticize. And I'm going to say some things that will say, so they are still like that in this deeper life? So they say that, 
I'm going to say some things that are going to shake some of you sisters that you have never been shaking before, you have never moved before, you have never bought before, you have been carrying on that slow Christianity, the Christianity that causes go slow for everybody else. And I'm going to shake you up. And that kind of Christianity that is causing go slow for Nigeria, we're going to knock it out of this place in Jesus' name. And we're going to we're not going to have a books watching Christianity. You know that kind of Christianity that is a smoking and that you know is a going on slowly. We're going to have a jet airplane Christianity. And we're really going to move fast. And if you are not ready to move, can I advise you to just go back to the OSS and pack your load tonight and say bye bye. That thing is too hot for me because from tonight it is going to get hot. And as we go on to the middle of the meeting, it's going to get hotter. Yeah. Uh, you know, it will be so hot, the devil will not have a place to stay here. Yeah. And sickness will not have a place to stay here. Yeah. And that kind of lukewarm Christianity that is just uh, going on as if we are not really meaning business with the Lord, that kind of Christianity cannot stay here in Jesus' name. Yeah. Are you ready for the kind of thing we have this week? Uh, because uh, God is depending on you and you are the people to shake everything shakeable in your community. You will shake, you will shake the devil and you will shake everything around you in Jesus' name. I'm talking to you tonight on youths and exploits. And um, some of you are going to be fast asleep by the time I finish my message. Uh, I don't know what we're going to do tonight. Did you ever hear me preach a 20-minute message before? By 20, 30 minutes, I'm just into my introduction. And then after 30 minutes, I have point one. And for campus people like this, for ordinary people in town, I have only three points, generally. For campus people, I think I need seven points. And... Um, well, maybe I reserve that till another time. I pity some of those young sisters that say, so this is what I came into. Well, you know, just, uh, just get relaxed. Uh, you know, I know some people in some of the meetings have gone. Uh, while I was preaching and preaching and preaching, they all slept off. Uh, but while I said, let us pray, you'll be surprised that the people that slept off, oh. somebody said, see what the devil has done. The devil didn't do that. It was Nepal. So I'm saying that, uh, you know, there are some people that just sleep through my message. And the moment I say, let us pray, somebody woke, woke them up and said, let us pray. I'm surprised they are the first people to receive miracles. Because it's all by grace. And the grace of God is available here tonight. So while I'm preaching, if you like to sleep, I give you the liberty. Go ahead and sleep. But I'm going to preach anyhow. And then after the message, at the time of prayer, somebody helped me wake them up because the Lord is starting the exploit 94 tonight. Yeah. And a lot is going to happen. In fact, I see a lot that is happening already. And things are going to change by the grace of God in Jesus' name. Well, let's look at Daniel chapter 11 reading to you from verse 32. Daniel chapter 11 verse 32 And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries But the people that do know their God shall be strong and shall do exploits The people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits during this uh, meeting, by the grace of God, we really want to know the Lord. There may be those of us who just know the Lord right now, mentally, nominally. You know there is a God in heaven, but He is not your Father. You have not become a real child of God. You have not been born again. And I'm going to throw the challenge to you, even tonight, that if you will come to know the Lord as your personal Savior, number one, you know that you are a sinner. Because the Bible says, all are sinned and come short of the glory of God. And when the Bible says, all have sinned, it really means, all have sinned. 
It means that in your own life, you have done some things that made you feel guilty. You have done some things contrary to the law of God. You have done some things that were called disobedience against the law of God. And it says, you come short of the glory of God. You come short of the power of God. You come short of the beauty of the glory of the Almighty God. And you realize that. And then you realize that you cannot save yourself. That whatever you do, and whatever sin you may try to transform or reform in your life, that cannot save you. That there is only one name, given under heaven, whereby you can be saved. That is the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you come, you confess. You do not pretend. You say, Lord, I know I am a sinner. And then you outline or you list the sins you have committed before the Lord. I'm saying the things the Bible calls sin. It may shock you if I began to tell you, as we look at the Word of God, as we look at the Bible, the things that the Bible, the Word of God, calls sin. And I want to plead with you not to argue with the Lord. I have seen young people that really have gone to the Lord, and I've seen them telling the Lord, Oh Lord, reveal myself to me. Reveal my heart to me. Reveal my life to me. Let me know wherein I've gone against your commandment. And the revelation God gave them, you'll be surprised. The things that God pointed at in their lives, saying, how about this? How about this? How about this? How about that? The things you past never, never thought about in your life that you have done. That if man were to point it out to you, you would have said, could that be a sin? Could that be wrong? Could that make me go astray? Could that make me come short of the glory of God? If you will be sincere to the Lord tonight, you will discover the things in your life that will hinder you from getting to the kingdom of God. And then you go before the Lord and you say, Lord, I know that I am a sinner. I want to know you as the real Savior of my life. There are many people that say they are born again. Many people say they are saved. But when you really come back to the Bible and you see the kind of life a child of God ought to be living, we will have to confess and accept that such people have not been truly born again. Then you come to know that your sins are forgiven by the Lord. You become born again. There is a joy of salvation that comes to you. And then you have the real life of a child of God. Then initially, in a preliminary way, in a very small way, you know the Lord. And yet, there is still much more to know about the Lord. But that is the beginning point. When you become truly born again and changed in your life, then you'll begin to see a lot of other things. That when you really know God, you will know that those things really matter. I'm looking at page 2 of your program uh, booklet. These things are written from scripture. And I'm going to make it part of the message that I have to preach. It says, The Lord thy God walketh in the midst of thy camp to deliver thee. To deliver thee. I hope we're still going to have time to explain that word deliver unto you. To tell you the ramifications, the depth and the height and the breadth of what it means to deliver. Uh, I found that many, many people who call themselves Christians, they do not know the height, the greatness, the depth of the work that God really wants to do in their lives. And therefore they take a meeting like this very likely. But it says, the Lord is walking in the midst of thy camp to deliver you. It says, therefore shall thy camp be holy, that you see no unclean thing in thee. That you see no unclean thing in thee. I've been in meetings where all that we concentrated upon is a getting out anything unclean, like unclean language unclean behavior, unclean conduct, unclean interaction, unclean jokes, 
unclean uh, conversations from our knees. And then we'll see the Lord do great, mighty, wonderful things. I could tell you some testimonies where we didn't have to pray much. That all we did was just come before the Lord and in quietness cleanse ourselves and make sure that anything, everything unclean is confessed. And uh, you know, somebody will rise up and make sometimes even a public confession. And, it's, and he sits now. Another person rises up and he makes a public confession. And he sits now. And then as we just uh, pray before the Lord and we are cleansed, then after that we have testimonies. And people begin to give testimonies. I'm talking of uh, meetings of young people that uh, God has helped me to hold in the past. And I'm believing that if we are very sincere before the Lord, we'll make sure there will be no unclean thing. We don't want here girlfriend, boyfriend relationship or any kind of exchange of letters or any kind of uh, moving about in the night. Uh, this one uh, trying to peep into the uh, sister's hostel. We don't want any unclean thing here because we want the power of the Almighty God to move unhindered in this place in Jesus' name. Uh, in some of the recent meetings I have uh, been to, I have seen a hunchback of 34 years being removed at the snap of the finger. I've seen a 30 years or 20 years of blindness being removed just like that. I've seen people that were brought into the meeting change because of um, madness. I've seen everything totally taken away in a single moment of time. I had a meeting here um, this year with some young people, secondary school children. And there was a girl that uh, had uh, evil power. I mean, real, real evil power. Uh, it was the first time some of our people in Lagos here will see that I was preaching like this. And I said that if you're a witch or if you're a wizard or something like that, that, uh, you know, the person like that will not prosper. And this girl just uh, told the people, uh, he said, not lie. That that one, that she is such and such, and she is, uh, you know, uh, prosper, she has this, she has this. And I kept on preaching. And then at the time of the prayer, I just said one word. Jesus, tell me that word. Jesus. That's how you are going to say Jesus? Jesus! I just mentioned that word, and there was a kind of magical glass, or culty glass, that was already implanted, embedded in the forehead. That thing broke at the mention of the name of Jesus. She held her head like this and ran out. And the ushers ran at her, not knowing what has happened. She wanted to reinforce herself to come into the meeting again, but the power had gone. And the whole thing had been shattered and broken. Eventually she confessed and surrendered herself. If we clean up our environment and we say that by the grace of God, this place is going to remain clean, I'm telling you that uh, there is no limit to what God can do in this place. It was, uh, I think this year, I went to Ivory Coast. And our pastor from Ivory Coast is here. We're having a meeting like this. And all we were talking about is holiness. All we were talking about is being clean. So that the Lord will deliver you. There was a man. This man was a witch. A real uh, trained, uh, powerful witch since uh, he was born. And he had a, a tiger, according to her, by, her, by his side every time. And he saw that a meeting was going on, and then he entered into that place. And he got hooked. He stayed there, he couldn't go. And then when I said, let us pray, that man had never bowed his head to close his eyes for prayer any time in his life. For the first time in his life, he closed his eyes, and then we pray. And I mentioned that same name. Whether it's French speaking country or English speaking country, all you need is that name. What's the name? Jesus. Jesus. And the moment I mentioned that name, he opened his eyes like this. He tried to find the tiger. tiger. The tiger had gone. He ran out of the building. And then the ushers ran after him. They brought him back. He, all the power, everything he had since he was born, he had lost everything. Then he came to the front and removed all the other things, the material with him. He handed everything over and said, we should upon it that he surrendered his life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Just talking on holiness. 
And that's why we are really serious on holiness in this meeting. We don't want any immorality. We don't want any kind of dirty discussion. This place is going to be clean as it has never been clean before in Jesus' name during this week. And the Lord will deliver you. I don't care what that kind of sickness, what that kind of infirmity, what that kind of bondage may be, or the bad luck, or the curse from anybody coming against your life. This week, you are going to drop everything in Jesus' name. Then, you endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Here, we want unity. We don't want divergent views. We don't want, I don't believe that. I don't accept that. I will not go that way. We don't want rebellion here. We don't want any child of the devil to confuse and to destroy the powerful meeting we are going to have in this place. There will be unity here. I said there will be unity here. If there is anything raising its ugly head in you that will say, I'm going to rebel. I'm not going to cooperate. I'm not going to be united with the people of God. That thing, we are going to crush it. If you know me when I'm in charge in a meeting, when I say I'm going to crush something, not just by speaking, I mean by prayer power, we will crush that thing. It's either you voluntarily say, here is it, crush it for me. But if you don't surrender it voluntarily, whether you like it or not, you are here, I am here, we are going to crush that thing. We are going to be united. Everything that we preach here on this pulpit, everything we preach in the seminars, there is going to be unity in our midst. Then it says, walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. He that says he abideth in him, ought himself also so to walk even as Christ walked. Is that possible? I mean, when you are walking and you say, that's a little Jesus there. That's a little Christ there. And even when the devil, when he sees you, he sees the power, the glory, the life, the holiness of Christ in you. I believe that even the devil cannot be rubbing hands on you like they used to, uh, to do in the past. You know, uh, I wonder when some Christians will say, uh, pray for me, pastor. The devil is walking on my back. If the devil is walking on your back, you have a problem. This week, the devil will not walk on your back. And all through the rest of your life, the devil will not walk on your back in Jesus' name. But it's going to mean that you are going to walk like Christ. You are going to live like Christ. Everything you do is going to be like Jesus Christ. You'll be an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. You will walk worthy. Say, I will walk worthy. We can do it in the power of the Lord. If you have not been born again, you are going to get born again tonight. And the grace to live the righteous life, you will have it in Jesus' name. Number five, it says, let no filthiness or foolish talking or jesting be once named among you. Is that possible? I said, is that possible? There will be no jesting. You see, where there is the spirit of prayer, the power of praying, you will see that jesting and the foolish talking will lessen that power of prayer. If we really want the power of God to be mighty in our midst, in the hotel, in the hall here, everywhere on this um, compound, we have to make sure that there is no jesting. And then men ought always to pray and not to faint. We will really pray. I said we will really pray. Now I come to number seven. Here, if you want to criticize me, get ready. I'm going to give you the chance. Because I'm even going to say it. You know, sometimes uh, when uh, some of us say things to you university people, I I'm surprised the way they treat these univers university people. They treat them as if they are jellyfish, as if they have no backbone, as if don't talk to them. Otherwise, you might offend them. If you are going to get offended, get ready. Because I'm going to say it the way it is. Are you ready? And I'm going to really lay it on you. Now you get ready. 
You know, they used to pet these people at the back and they used to say, why don't you give up this for Jesus? Why don't you give up this one for Jesus? You are going to give up this one for yourself, not for Jesus. If you want the blessing of God in your life, if you want the blessing of obedience in your life, you are going to give up these things, not for Jesus, but for yourself. Are you angry? You can't get angry. I have not even started. Now number seven is, it says, Let not thy nakedness be discovered. You see, all these topless, backless, bottomless, uh, sleeveless, less, 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 everything. You know, the way they sew these clothes nowadays, uh, this time they cut uh, four inches, then they cut another thing, then they cut another thing, until it is like uh, they are not wearing clothes anymore. I think it, maybe it's because they say that we came from the age, so we're, we're trying to be like the animals. That, uh, you know, there's no clothes anymore. And then we are not even dressed at all. But in this place, and for the rest of our lives, whenever we appear in public, we are going to cover our nakedness. Is that right? It says, let not thy nakedness be discovered. Be a dignified believer. Be a dignified Christian. Be a dignified sister. And make sure that no man around you looking at you from any direction whether you are bending down or standing up or jumping or running or whatever no man will be able to discover your nakedness and it says thou shalt make them cover their nakedness the pastor the preacher the leader has a responsibility in a meeting like this and in a church circle to make the members of that congregation cover their nakedness and uh, you sisters, even in your hostel, you have to take care. Because sometimes uh, the windows might be transparent. Or it might be that some people are carelessly walking in some places. You make sure that you are not a source of temptation to anyone. That you really cover your nakedness. Then it says, the women ought to... What's the next word? What's the next thing? Cover what? ahead now because of deeper life <laughs> you didn't read that in your bible that's what these ladies tell us they say because of deeper life they say because i'm not in deeper life therefore that's why i don't cover my head i've seen some of us you know as uh, we came in today and uh, walking up and down i've seen all these uh, airs they burnt in the fire and you know what they call it you young people what do they call it now? Again? Okay, you know it, you are doing it. You know, they pump the head and they have this strand and that strand and that one and this earring here and the lipstick here. Don't let them, don't let anybody know that you are, one of, you are not one of the people of God, clean and, you know, well dressed and then you don't have all these marks of the world upon you. Make sure that all the pamming, if there is anything you can do to it. I don't know, it's a long time I left school. Can I tell you the year I left school? I passed out to in 1967. So I don't know how they do it anymore now. So some of you, you were not even born at that time. Uh, so uh, I don't know what they do anymore, but whatever you can do to remove the pamming and remove all the listings, I hope there is um, whatever uh, solution they can use to clean up that thing and the one in the finger and the one on the cheek and anything. Let's clean everything up from tonight by the grace of God in Jesus' name. I thought you were even going to be angry. See how you are saying amen excitedly. You look like people that really want the truth. And you look like people that want me to tell you everything in my heart. So let's make sure that everything of the palming, of the jewelry, of all these things that are symbols of the world upon people that will mark you out as an Egyptian, mark you out as a people of the world. Let us make sure that we get rid of everything. And if I saw you like uh, you still have your jewelry on, you still have all the things and everything, you will not cover your head, I'll just take you not to be born again, to be very sincere. I'll take you to uh, be saying, I'm going to rebel. I'm going to disobey. I don't want the word of God in my life. I only came here to see what they are doing. I'm not really a child of God. But 
I believe you want to be a child of God. And you want the grace of God in your life. And you want to live as a child of God really ought to live. It says that they covered their head because of the angels. Let the women adorn themselves in modest apparel or shamefacedness and sobriety. Not with broided hair or what's the next word? What is it? Gold or pearls or costly array. He that says he abideth in Christ ought to walk even as Christ walked. By it, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. We don't want anybody going to town and doing shopping. We don't want anybody roaming around in the villages or going around saying he wants to go and pray the night somewhere. Whenever we say we are meeting here, we want everyone to be here. If any sick among you, let him call for the elders. Let them pray over him in the name of the Lord. I believe the prayer of faith shall save the sea. Can I have an amen? There is no sickness that can remain here when we pray for you in Jesus' name. Every word of God is pure. Thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye learn, and avoid them. He that beareth such God's speed is partaker of his evil. If ye know these things, happy blessed are ye. If you do them, I believe we'll be obedient in Jesus' name. Now, if we're going to really do exploits, we're reaching all these things down from Scripture so that our lives in the sight of the Lord will be what it ought to be. And when it is like that, then the Lord will be able to do great, mighty things in our lives in Jesus' name. Now, that's my introduction, point number one. I'm serious about this now. Are you tired? Is it when, you know, I look at the congregation whenever I preach, and if you frown, and you put your hand like this, I'll be thinking in my mind, oh, those students say, when is he going to finish? So, look cheerful. Are you alright? Point number one. Now, point number one, preparation for exploits. We really want to do exploits, like you heard of David that did exploits and destroy Goliath. Like you heard of Moses that did exploits in Egypt. Like you have heard of Joshua that made the sun to stand still and the moon to stand still. Like you have heard of Caleb at his old age that said, give me this mountain. Like you have heard of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego that went into the furnace of that Nebuchadnezzar made, and yet the fire could not have any effect on them. Like you heard of Daniel, that went to the lion's den. Like you heard of Elijah, that was able to raise that dead boy. Like you heard of Elisha. Even after Elisha died, that the dead, peep, the dead person that came in contact with the bone of Elisha, came up and rose again like you had of Paul the Apostle or the signs of an Apostle upon his ministry in that same way. I believe that every brother, every sister here can do exploits. But then there's going to be a preparation. You need to prepare your heart. You need to prepare your life. You need to prepare everything in you so that the exploits that people did in generations gone by you will be able to do today as well. What preparation do we make? I've given you some of the preparations that you will compare these things with your very life and with your Christian life if you are backsliding. If you know that you have never been born again, you will go to the Lord as part of your preparation, saying, Oh Lord, I know that something needs to take place in my life. And as you prepare, I believe that mighty, miraculous, wonderful things will begin in your life, even from tonight, in Jesus' name. In Joshua chapter 3 and verse 5, Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. You see, there are people that take the Lord for granted. They take the miracles of God for granted. They take signs and wonders for granted. 
or they take the manifestation of the power of the Lord for granted. They feel that automatically because they are just in a meeting like this or because they are just uh, meeting with the people of God anywhere that the signs and the wonders and the mighty things and the exploits will just be happening in their lives. But Joshua said, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow. The Lord will do wonders among you. Joshua should not have said that if Joshua were like many Christians today. Joshua should have said, look at the promises of God. Look at the things that God had said. He had said, I will be with you as I was with Moses. He had said, no man shall be able to stand before you. He had said, every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon, I have given unto you. He could then have thought, everything is automatic. Like many Christians are thinking today. The Lord said he will save. He said he will heal. He said he will deliver. He said he will baptize. He said he will purify. He said he will use us. He said he will be fruitful. He said our fruit will remain. Therefore, they do not know there is any condition. There is any preparation to be made. They feel that because the Lord has promised, therefore he cannot fail. But it says, sanctify yourselves. It means, number one, set yourself apart. Cleanse yourself. Purge yourself. Examine yourself and see what will not be to the pleasure of the Lord in your life. And get rid of those things in your own life. Sanctify yourselves. It means that you should have gotten saved. And then you consecrate yourself upon the altar. And you say, Lord, not my will. Not what I want. But what you want in my life. And you are saying, oh Lord, I will climb any mountain for you. I will do anything you want me to do. I will get rid of anything you want me to get rid of. That boyfriend will have to go. That girlfriend will have to go. All those uh, simple private practices that have been involved in all those things have to go. Sanctify yourself. Do it for yourself. Examine your life and see the things that will hinder the power of God in your life. After you have been saved, then you need to move forward and lay everything completely upon the altar. I don't argue with God anymore on any point in your life. All the things you've been dragging with God. Oh God, should I do that? Oh God, can I do that? Oh God, can I subject myself to that? Oh God, can I consecrate that? Oh God, can I give that up? Little sin or big sin, you give everything up. And then you tell the Lord to even sanctify you, to purify you, to purge you. When that has been done in your heart, in your soul, in your very life, then it says, for tomorrow, the Lord will do wonders among you. If the Lord doesn't do wonders among us, it will not be his fault. It will not be that his promises have failed. It will not be that he doesn't have power today. It will not be because this is a student meeting. Maybe that is why this did not happen. That did not happen. It will be because we failed the Lord in not purging ourselves. Not preparing ourselves. But I believe we'll prepare ourselves. We need preparation for exploits. Any of the people you have found in Bible days that did mighty things, they prepared spiritually and they made sure that they brought their lives in total conformity to the word of the Lord. Then, let me go to point two. Our time is going. Prayer for exploits. If we're going to really have exploits and the strongholds in your life that the devil had built there, if those strongholds are going to crumble, and if all the impossibilities you've been carrying in your life, if those impossibilities are going to be removed, then you really have to pray and pray through. You really have to give yourself to prayer during this time. And you will pray without fainting. We're told in Luke chapter 18, verse 1, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray, always to pray, always to pray, and not to faint. Always to pray, and not to faint. That is, you will not allow yourself to be weak or to be tired. There have been times I've found it necessary to just uh, keep standing. That's when I'm in the privacy of my room. I'm walking up and down so that I can pray without falling asleep. 
I can pray without getting tired. There are times you'll find that you have to force yourself into it. If you are waiting till you find it convenient, if you are waiting till uh, you feel that you really want to pray, if you are waiting till you can pray the, other, the way the others are praying, if you wait, it may never come. You may have to force yourself into it and open your mouth and pray aloud and stand on the promises of the Lord. And whatever has to be uh, taking care in your life, you take care of all those things. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. I think if there was anybody that didn't need to pray at all, that would be our Lord Jesus Christ. But you'll know that he'll rise up early in the morning, and then late at night, and then during the day, and after he had given messages, and a lot of times in his life, he will really pray. No wonder the disciples, after they saw him praying, they said, teach us to pray. The way John the Baptist taught his disciples to pray. No wonder, even in Acts of the Apostles, they said, we will give ourselves continually to prayer. Continually to prayer. In all situations and circumstances in their lives and in the ministry of the church, they gave themselves unto prayer. And great were the wonderful things that God did in their lives. Number three is power and spiritual exploits. Power and spiritual exploits. I believe that during this uh, meeting, the power of God can be so much in this meeting and in our lives. But then, we'll have to yield ourselves to the Lord so that His power will move mightily. Well, when you are born again, you have a little bit of the power of God. Because it says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of of Christ because it is the power of God unto salvation. So as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. He told the disciples that were born again to rejoice not just because the devils are subject unto them, but because their names are written in the book of life in heaven. And then he said, I give unto you power. When you are born again, you have limited power. When you go on to sanctification, you have more of the power of God. But when you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, then do you really have power? Because it says, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And then you'll be witnesses unto him, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria, and then to the uttermost part of the earth. Let me close with the story of Elijah and Elisha. It's in 2 Kings chapter 2, reading to you from verse 1. And it came to pass, when the Lord will take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. If you are looking for uh, somebody to prod you and pet you and encourage you, well, you may get some people, but your blessings might be limited. Here we find Elisha. Elisha really needed the power of God because he was to stand in the room of Elijah. And God was to take Elijah away from him. What would you have thought? You would have thought that Elijah will call Elisha and say, Well, do you know that I'll be going on a journey? I will not come back. And whatever you need, this is the time to ask me. Elijah could have made it very simple for him, but he did not. He told him, he said, Elisha, tarry here. Stay here. I am going where the Lord has appointed for me. He needed to go unto Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. You see, that is a commitment you don't find in a lot of young people. They easily give up. They are easily discouraged. If you make the message a little tight, a little difficult, a little demanding, if you make the mountain where to climb a little bit uphill, then they feel that, well, can I bear that? 
Can I go that length? Will I be able to do that in my life? But then Elisha was not a person that could easily give up. And then the sons of the prophets in verse 3 that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. There are people that prefer to talk instead of praying. There are people that prefer discussion and, uh, you know, just uh, chatting apart from praying. But these uh, people, they came to Elisha. They said, do you know, they rejoice in what they call revelation. They rejoice in what they call their vision. They rejoice in what they call their knowledge. But the knowledge did not profit them. But Elisha was a man that wanted to translate that knowledge, that revelation into action and power in his life. I, I pray you'll be of that mind. And so he just told them, hold it, hold it. This is no time for discussion. This is no time for play. This is no time to tell stories. In this uh, congress uh, we have come for, this is no time to tell stories. We really want to pray. And the power of God will descend upon our lives in Jesus' name. He said, I know as much as you know, but I don't want to talk. I know it. Hold ye your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee. For the Lord has sent me to Jericho. Elijah acted as if he didn't know that these sons of the prophets were troubling Elisha. He, he acted as if he didn't know that these people were disturbing him. So he said, well, the Lord has sent me to Jericho. And then this man will not change in his conviction, in his consecration, in his commitment. He said, as the Lord liveth, and as I so liveth, I will not leave thee. You see, that is the secret of blessing. And I'm telling you that I have found uh, some people that with all the discouragements, with all the things that might have happened to them, yet they determined that they were not going to leave the way of the Lord or the word of the Lord. Those are the people that you find God will bless. But the people that get offended because of a fly, because of a mosquito, because of a pebble, because of a little comment against them, because of some little inconveniences, because the food is late, because there's not enough water, or because they are not uh, taking care of them properly. The people that get easily offended in a meeting like this, they don't get much. They be grumbling and criticizing and finding fault with everything. But then, he didn't find fault with Elijah. He didn't find fault with his master, with his leader. He said, well, as the Lord liveth, and as I so liveth, I will not leave thee. What do you think of a person? The master is saying, leave me. Stay behind. I'm going on. I want to go to the place where God has called me. And the man is saying, I will not leave thee. I will not leave thee. That is the attitude that will bring the blessing of God upon our lives. So they came to Jericho. And the sons of the prophets, they are always there. That were at Jericho. They came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? He answered, Ye, I know it. Hold ye your peace. You ask me, why do we have double number of miracles in the ministry of Elisha as that of Elijah? Because of this spirit that will not give up. Because of a person that will not stand in the middle of the way. Because of the mind and the heart and the commitment that will not look at all these other people that are troubling him with uh, their information. Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. Now what do you think of a leader that will bring the discouragement the first time he passed the test? The second time he passed the test. The third time now he told him again and said, tarry here. That's why I said at the beginning that if you're looking for something to criticize, I will give you enough to criticize. But then it will mean that you allow yourself to be cheated from the blessings of the Lord. But whatever is said, however it is said, it might even look directly discouraging that you say, I'm not going to be discouraged. If they tell me in a sharp way, in a direct way, 
in a rude manner, if they tell me in a shocking way that this is what to do, by the grace of God, I am going to do it. And when you obey the word of the Lord, you are going to find that the power of God is going to overflow in your life in Jesus' name. Then he said, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And they two went on. And fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view a part of, and they two stood by Jordan. You see, there were people that were watching. We're going to see what they are going to get. Don't you know there might be people that are watching you? He has uh, gone to that meeting. We're going to see what he is going to get. I pray you will get something. Something that is cogent enough, weighty, heavy enough, that the people will know that that brother got something in that meeting. That sister got something in that meeting. And what he got was for the rest of his life. In fact, it even continued with him until after death. And we're told in, in verse 8, And Elijah took his mantle, and he wrapped it together, and smote the waters, and they were divided hither and thither, so that they went, they too went over on dry ground. Now, I want you to realize uh, that Elijah did not have to pray, 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 and pray in the name of the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. These men are the real power of God. And he just got to that riverside and took his own mantle. He knew there was power in that mantle. He knew that the power of God was heavy and mighty upon him. And then he just smote the river and it went here and there and they went on dry ground. And in verse 9, it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee. See how he waited until this time. See how he had discouraged him before. Starry here, I'm going on to another place. Starry here, I'm going on to another place. Starry here, I'm going on to another place yet again. And that man kept on following, kept on following, kept on following. Will not allow himself to be discouraged. Now at the end he said, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. He didn't give him the information before. Now he said, I'm going. This will be the last time. This is your very chance. Ask what I shall do for thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. That's quite ambitious. And yet, that's what you wanted. There are many people that are so moderate in their asking, in their demand. And they will not ask for something great and something big. But Elisha said, a double portion, nothing less is what I want and nothing else is what I'm following you for. A double portion of thy spirit to be upon me. And he said, thou hast asked a hard thing. How can I give you the double of what I have? The double knowledge of what I have. Double speed, double power, double anointing of what I have. It's a hard thing. Nevertheless, no matter how hard something is in this life, there's a nevertheless. Sanctification may be hard for some people, there's a nevertheless. Holy Ghost baptism may be hard for some people, there is a nevertheless. I remember in my own life, I was a Christian. If I had a headache, I'd be looking for somebody to pray for me. And if uh, the young ones that are living with me were living with me at that time, I was Christian. I was even sanctified. If they had any problem, I'll be looking for somebody uh, to pray for, to pray for them. If I had any little difficulty, if I had any little confusion, any little kind of conflict or something, I'll be looking for somebody. But it came to a time in my life, I said, no more. Weakness, no more. All this looking for somebody to pray, no more. Not being able to stand firm and say, you devil, here is the limit for you. You cannot get beyond this place. Being weak and being timid, no more. And then I really stood my ground and by the grace of God, something has changed. I believe that can happen in your life too. But you have to come to the point in your life where you say all the weaknesses of the past, all this jellyfish Christianity, all this thing without any backbone, all the amphibian kind of Christianity, uh, today in the water, today in the dry ground, all this kind of thing, no more in my life. 
I am now going to be serious and this week everything will change and everything will change. And so the man wanted the double portion. And then the man of God said, you have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me, when I be taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, but if not, if you allow yourself to be diverted, to be distracted, if you allow the devil to turn your mind to another thing, if you allow the other people that do not really want something deep from the Lord, if you allow them to distract your attention, if not, it shall not be so. And Elisha determined it will be so. Are you determined it will be so? I said, are you really determined it will be so? You know, I've been in meetings of young people. And I'm telling you that those young people, I'm telling you of something many, many years ago now, they were sold really to the Lord. And I'm telling you real testimony here. There was a particular sister, that time deeper life had not started. We were just, uh, you know, traveling about from place to place, from place to place, to challenge these young people to move on for the Lord. And uh, we treated some passages in the Bible and we laid, we laid it hard on them. And this uh, young lady, in fact, we didn't even talk on jewelry at that time. We didn't talk on all these things that I spoke about tonight at that time. She just left everything. Uh, breakfast, we didn't see her. And at the time of the lunch, we didn't see her. All the break we had, she just went to the Lord and said, Lord, if you don't transform my life, if you don't change me, if you don't remove me from this weakened kind of Christianity, kill me, take my life, and take me home. I want something. While she was praying, nobody mentioned jewelry. She removed jewelry. While she was praying, all the painting and everything, everything was cleaned up. And, and it wasn't deeper life. That time it was just scripture union. And then, when everything had been cleaned up, and you know, and the scripture union at that time, we were not allowed to talk about sanctification, Holy Ghost baptism, speaking in tongues. The Lord sanctified her. She said she felt like liquid of love inside her heart. All, her, all the people that she had something against before, the flow of love, the love of God, everything was just flowing to those people. And she went on, she said, Oh Lord, is this all heaven has for me? Is this all I can receive? She kept on praying without us talking about speaking in tongues, without us talking about the baptism in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost came upon her. She began to speak in beautiful language. When she came back to the meeting we were having like this, just looking at her, we knew something had happened. In fact, some of us that were preachers and leaders, we couldn't just to even ask her question and to say this and that. We felt it was holy ground. We felt there was an, a, a, there was an awe. There was, there was a glory around her that nobody could come near. And whenever she opened her mouth like this to witness to people, they were melted down like this. They were just giving their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. In another meeting, uh, you know, we were having meetings like this. The power of God was so much. And these were meetings of, uh, you know, young people. And uh, one of the leaders in that place, uh, became so sick that uh, she couldn't get up to come to the meeting. And all we did was just go there and we said, in the name of Jesus, get up. That's all we did. She got up. She came back to the meeting. The power of God fell upon her. The sickness, everything had been totally taken away. In another place like this, uh, one of us, uh, one of us, uh, young people, at that time, the power of God was so much. Somebody was sick in the hotel. And then they called this uh, person, they said, hey, so and so is sick, why don't you come and pray? And he felt he had said a particular word, that it was uh, too critical, and that he didn't speak nicely enough. And so when he got uh, to the bedside of that person, terribly, terribly sick, he just knelt down. He wasn't praying for the fellow, he was saying, oh Lord, that way I spoke, that way I reacted, Please, for, he was praying quietly. Please forgive me. And then when he got up, after he had prayed for himself, wanting to pray for the other fellow, the other fellow had been healed, and the other fellow got up too. Miracles, revival, a lot of mighty things. Why can't it start here tonight? Why can't it be on our campuses like that? Why can't we chase the devil? I remember the, another young person. There was a, this a fellow, a witch in a particular, a, in a particular house. 
and she came to some of the meetings we were having like this and she prayed the lord touched her life everything totally changed when she got back home the witch that had been troubling every way everybody in that her house looked at her like this and said where did you go that i'm now afraid of you and now that witch became afraid of this young uh, christian student i believe the same thing can happen and it will begin to happen here in jesus name and so when elijah was to be taken away in verse 11 and it came to pass and it still went on and told that behold there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder and elijah went up by a while went into heaven and elijah saw it i pray you will see it you will see when the power begins to descend you will see the anointing and it will be yours in jesus name and he cried my father my father the chariot of israel and the horsemen thereof and he saw him no more and he took hold of his own clothes and he rent them into pieces your own clothes your own actions your own thing that you know you took pride in i will do my thing in my own way it it comes to a point in your life where you take those things you valued before the things that you wanted to die for before the things that you felt i cannot give up this one i cannot give up that one it comes to a point in your life you want the power of god so much you get rid of all those things and then after you had drained that in two pieces then he took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of river Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? Is he dead? I said, is he dead? The God that can bring fire out of heaven, is he dead? The God that can divide river Jordan in two, is he dead? The God that can heal the sick, is he dead? The God of David that made him to be able to kill Goliath at his little age, is he dead? The God of Daniel that saw him through to the lion's den and saw him through the kingdoms of Babylon, Middle Persia, and all those kingdoms. Is that God dead? The God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That they went into the fire like this. They were so bold, they said, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, king, we were not careful to tell you anything. If it be true, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us. Is that God dead? I said, is that God dead? Today, Christians cannot stand persecution. Is their God dead? Today, they cannot stand little trial. Is their God dead? Today, little sickness, we are running up, up and down. Elsa's character. Is our God dead? Today, we say witches and wizards and sorcerers and the occulty people are troubling us. Is our God dead? If that God is not dead, where is that God in your life? Where is his power in your life? Where is his power on our campuses? Where is his power in the fellowships that we have? And then we are told that when he had said that, when he also had smitten the waters, they parted here and thither, and Elisha went over. And the sons of the prophets which were to be at Jericho saw him, and they said, The spirit of Elijah does rest upon Elisha. Can you have that spirit? Can you have that spirit? You are going to prepare. You are going to pray. And then the power will come. Rise up and let us pray. It will mean that during this week, whatever is the hindrance to your life, don't say, well, I'm saved already. I'm sanctified already. I'm baptized in the Holy Ghost already. Whatever it is in your life that is hindering the flow of the power of God, that you are so weak, that you are not standing firm, that you are such a Christian that is uh, falling to the rising tomorrow, is such a Christian that is uh, uh, carrying on this kind of jellyfish Christianity, you are going to tell the Lord, weakness no more, falling and rising no more, timidity, fear no more, lack of boldness no more, uh, fearing witches and wizards no more, looking for deliverance every day, every week, every month no more, I want the power of God upon my life. Be strict and be firm with yourself. And do not allow anything to stand between you and the spiritual power that you actually need.
take the message of the word of God. Whether hard or simple, take it all. Take it all. If you are not born again, this is the time to be born again. If you have all those signs of the world upon you, the jewelry, the palming, the painting, the cosmetics, and all the things of the world, here is the time to take your sign and say, God, I'm going to stand upon the word of God. Are you ladies that are here at present, you are not covering your head? We are covering our head not because of deep alive, but because of the angels. Because of the angels. The Lord your God is walking in the midst of your camp to deliver you. Therefore will you be holy that you see no unclean thing in thee. If you have not been born again, be sincere with the Lord and get born again tonight. If you have been falling and rising, you know you are a backslider. Be sincere with the Lord tonight and come back to the Lord. Don't deceive yourself. Prepare for the exploits. Let your prayer be sincere. Let your repentance be genuine. Be determined you are going to get something from the Lord in this Congress. Don't play with sin. Don't hide any sin. Don't deceive yourself. Don't cover up. If you really want the blessing of the Lord, you are going to deal ruthlessly with sin. You are going to get rid of it. You are going to fully repent. Any private, secret, sin, secret immorality, you are going to root it out of your life. You really need to prepare for the visitation, the power of the Lord. You cannot claim the blessing of God or the promises of God if you are not dealing with that sin. You really want to do exploits? You will need to really be serious with anything in your life that the Lord is against. The Lord knows your life. The Lord knows your heart. If there is any sin you are covering, you cannot abide or remain in sin and say that the grace of God shall abound. Deal with the sin. Settle the whole account of the Lord. God is no respecter of persons. God is not going to bless you while you are in rebellion. It's not going to bless you while you are in disobedience. Are you saved? Not, no, not just knowing about salvation. Are you really saved? Are you telling the Lord, come with me, I'm going to give up every form of sin. And I want Christ to reign supreme in my life. If you are serious and sincere with the Lord, and you are not excusing any wrongdoing, any disobedience, any rebellion in your life, then the blessing of the Lord will be upon your life. But if you cover your sin, then you cannot prosper. You cannot be blessed of the Lord if you cover your sin. In the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain, in the Lord. The labor of all church workers shall never be in vain, as our Father, the Father of all globally, 
the convener of GCK. Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumui gives us the Global Church Workers Conference live from Taraba State, Nigeria. All church workers and ministers globally to join hands with all ministers across Taraba State, Northern Nigeria from 17 to 20 November 2022. It's our time for triumphing in ministry, even in troublous times. Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumui will be ministering 8 a.m. daily from Jalingo, Taraba State, to the world, via satellite, and on all our social media platforms. It will be an avalanche of global expositions and revelations. Your labor will not be in vain. When we started the year 2022, you had hopes, you had desires, you had dreams, but suddenly, all over the globe, we read and hear of failures economically, politically, with climate change and security breaches here and there. And now, I hear a voice echoing towards the northeastern geopolitical zone of Nigeria. Now, I hear a voice echoing towards the northeastern geopolitical zone of Nigeria. Today, the Lord is saying, weep not. All your tears are dried, because behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed. And it's confirmed that there's still one hope, one way, one solution, and one power that never fails. The power of Jesus Christ reverberates this November with GCK live from Adamawa State, Nigeria. The land of beauty set to beautify your life through Christ. As the covenant of GCK, Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumui will touch down in Adamawa, Nigeria with a power that never fails. Healing, deliverance, salvation. November 24 to 29, 2022. 1600 hours GMT daily and 0700 hours GMT for Sunday worship service. Young people from all levels will be empowered for excellence at the Impact Academy on November 26, 2022 at 0600 hours GMT. Ministers and professionals will be empowered for breakthrough in ministry on November 25, 26, 28 and 29 at 0600 hours GMT. Our guest gospel minister is Bob Feet. This is an avalanche of manifestation of the power that never fails for all life. Power will herald your celebration. Dr. William Kumui says, Be it confirmed in your life in Jesus' name. GCK, the gospel to every creature.